AI this, AI that, it's literally all you hear these days. Everyone's talking about artificial intelligence and how it's changing the world, but no one has a clue how it works. I'm sure by now you're all used to seeing your phones recognize your face or even Siri understand your voice, but have you ever stopped to wonder how? Well, today I'm going to be breaking it all down for you in simple terms, so make sure you watch until the end. Now think of artificial intelligence like a super smart brain that we teach to do things, but unlike our brains, AI doesn't actually know anything when it starts. It's kind of like a newborn baby that's eager to learn about the world but has zero prior knowledge whatsoever. Now to teach this brain, we use something called data. Data is basically just information, like sounds, pictures or words. Anything that we record is basically data. Just like how we learn by seeing and hearing things around us, AI learns from the data that we feed into it. So for example, if we wanted to uh, teach an AI model to recognize a cat, we show it thousands of pictures of cats. AI then starts to figure out patterns in these photos and learns what makes a cat look like a cat and how a dog is different. This process is kind of like teaching the machine to play a game of spot the difference. Now, once it sees enough examples, it gets really, really good at making decisions. When you show it a new picture, all by itself, it can recognize it as a cat or a dog. But this learning can actually happen in different ways. One way is using a technique called supervised learning. To understand this technique, imagine a student with a workbook where each problem comes with the correct answer written right next to it. This is how supervised learning works. The model gets a bunch of examples with labels, like pictures of cats labeled as cat or dogs labeled as dog. And by seeing the correct answers over and over again, the AI learns to make accurate predictions of the answer when it's given a new unseen problem. The next technique is called unsupervised learning. In this scenario, the AI is like a student given a box of puzzle pieces, but with no picture guide. Instead of being told what the answer is, the AI has to figure out all the patterns all on its own. It might group similar items together or even find hidden structures within the data. Now, another technique is called reinforcement learning. In this technique, the artificial intelligence is like a student that's learning through a game of trial and error, but with rewards. So the AI actually gets points for making the right predictions, but loses points for making mistakes. Now over time, it learns the best strategy to win the game and maximize its points. This is actually the kind of learning that's used to train robots. And finally, we have self-supervised learning. To understand this technique, imagine the AI as a student who makes up their own exams. So it basically grabs a sentence, covers up some of the words, and then tries to guess what's missing. This way it learns from the data itself without needing a teacher to come and mark it for say. This is actually how models like ChatGPT learn to understand and generate text. But AI capabilities don't just stop at detecting pictures of cats and dogs. We can teach AI to do all sorts of things, from suggesting the next song you might like based off your music history, all the way to helping doctors detect diseases based on previous patient cases. Now based on its capabilities, AI gets separated into three separate categories. Narrow AI, General AI, and Super AI. Narrow AI, otherwise known as Weak AI, is actually really good at doing only one thing. Now that one thing could be recognizing faces, or suggesting songs, or even playing chess, depending on the use case. Right now, most of the AI that we see around us is Narrow AI, helping us make our lives more efficient, one task at a time. Next, we have General AI, or AGI, which is still a work in progress. This AI can do just about anything a human can do. AGI would basically be like having a, a super smart assistant that can do almost anything you ask it to, from solving complex problems to learning new skills all on the fly. The idea behind AGI is to make a model that can learn from its surroundings and generalize its knowledge across domains just like humans can. Now, scientists are still working on AGI but it seems to be closer to us now than ever before. And finally, there's Super AI or ASI. Now this type of AI would basically be smarter than all of the humans combined, all 7 billion of us. ASI could solve complex problems we can't even imagine and might even come up with new inventions all by its own. ASI kind of reminds me of the movie Lucy when she was at 99% brain capacity. I don't feel pain, fear, desire. It's like all things that make us human are fading away. It's like the less human, I feel, all this knowledge about everything, quantum physics, applied mathematics, the infinite capacity of a cell's nucleus, they're all exploding inside my brain, all this knowledge. I don't know what to do with it. For now, ASI is basically something out of science fiction, but at this rate of advancement, I can definitely see it becoming a reality within our lifetime. 
So to recap, narrow AI is really good at doing one thing very well. General AI can do just about anything a human can. And the super AI would be something like having the ultimate genius. But we're not quite there yet. As a non-technical person, that's everything you need to know about AI and how it's trained. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe because AI is just getting started and you wouldn't want to miss out. I'll be back.